First, let's talk briefly about what is the main purpose of the SETI program. For those among you that don't know what SETI is, an interstellar journey to visit another civilization in a distant world, at least for now, is beyond the technological possibilities of human civilization. However, we are able to use very sensitive receivers to search the sky for any radio signals of artificial origin generated by non-human civilizations. SETI is a very complex project. It is a program dedicated to the search for extraterrestrial intelligent life, evolved enough to be able to send radio signals into the cosmos. The program also takes care of sending signals of our presence to any other civilizations able to pick them up. Proposed in 1960 by Frank Drake, still one of its directors, in 1974 the SETI Institute was finally born. The starting point for the SETI program was the discovery that exoplanets are common. This has radically changed our view of the universe. The likelihood that there are habitable worlds everywhere in the universe seems more plausible than ever before. Astronomers are developing new instruments to help search for life on other planets. By analyzing data from exoplanets and identifying biosignatures or technosignatures, we will be able to search for habitable planets and the presence of life. But what are biosignatures and technosignatures? A technosignature is any measurable property or effect that provides scientific evidence of past or present technology. Technosignatures are analogs to the biosignature that signal the presence of life, whether or not intelligent. Today we will focus on some of the creepiest and saddest technosignatures we might detect in the future with the help of better technologies. Necrosignatures One type of SETI technosignatures that we aren't very likely to ever see, but remains possible, is the concept of a necrosignature. The idea of seeing an alien civilization at or near the moment of its extinction. If you think about it, it is probably one of the creepiest types of evidence for an alien civilization that we could ever find. This type of events tend to, of course, be very brief and you simply have to be looking in the right place at the right time to see them. Imagine an astronomer minding his own business in his observatory and then all of a sudden he detects brief characteristic flashes of gamma rays on nearby exoplanets that might signal a nuclear exchange or a signature of some pathogen killing huge amounts of life on that world. Such an ill-fated astronomer. This would look like a dramatic short-term rise in methane and ethane in the exoplanet's atmosphere that could be traced to the death and rotting of an entire biosphere after some catastrophe. Yet another might be the presence of artificial chemicals of a dangerous nature, such as the presence of CFCs in an exoplanet atmosphere that might signal that the civilization is terraforming a planet or ruining their own. The scenario would invariably open up questions of our own demise. If we saw enough of them, we might conclude that all civilizations simply destroy themselves, and someday we likely will too, which would be really sad. Imagine an alien civilization that knew of Earth, said they detected our oxygen levels, and concluded Earth had a biosphere. They might also pick up our own technosignatures, such as radar and possibly even radio communications. Then all of a sudden they see a bunch of gamma ray flashes, followed by a rapid rise in methane and afterwards the planet is never quite the same, and the radio signals go silent. Let's hope they or we never detect necrosignatures. Galactic Tombstones Imagine you were an advanced alien from an advanced civilization that is about to turn the lights off because of a fatal error it made, and wanted to give some warning signs to other civilizations out there. One of the sadder possibilities within speculation about alien civilizations is that we may not find a thriving galaxy-spanning empire out there, but rather a kind of tombstone. This could come in many forms, such as a SETI signal that, when decoded, explains that the civilization broadcasting it has gone extinct, and gives a laundry list of things that other civilizations should never do. This might cover things like the development of advanced artificial intelligence, or antimatter weaponry, or even exotic forms of matter. Another possibility is an artifact within or passing through the solar system that gives clear evidence of warfare such as a destroyed ship. While a long shot, it is possible that the first evidence we see of an alien civilization comes from a long dead one, and it's always possible that we may never detect any evidence of a living alien civilization. The rule of civilization in the universe 
is that it always comes to an end, one way or another. Incomprehensible Signals Imagine if you were a human from 5,000 years ago and someone handed you a computer. You not only wouldn't know what it was or what it did, you would be missing much of the basic knowledge of the device to even figure it out. It might rain, but you'd only know what that was if you were familiar with telephones. In general, if you accidentally answered the call, which would be truly accidental, you would hear a disembodied voice, a very weird voice, speaking to you. Now, let's say you could figure out the language of that voice. You still wouldn't know what a speaker was, and you wouldn't know how to talk into the device. In this case, you might try to find a way to answer, or you might instead destroy the phone, fearing demons. And yes, history tells us that humans did these type of things a lot in the past. Or bless it and put it in a temple, or think the whole thing silly and use it to level out the table. But once you knew it wasn't magic and got used to the whole idea of cell phones, you would see its utility and perhaps even start producing and selling one. And you will surely find someone who's interested in buying one. So there might be a highly advanced alien civilization, and for all we know, communication between advanced civilizations is all around us. We just don't know how to detect it. Yet at some point, as our technology advances, we may detect it, but there is no guarantee we'd understand it or even understand how it worked. It might be totally mystifying invoking science we don't understand, but one thing would be clear, that we were surrounded by alien civilizations far, far more advanced than our own. Such a situation tends not too well for the less advanced civilizations. Messages from Dead Universes and Beyond Have you ever heard of the theory stating that we're living in just one of the infinite series of a repeating universe? Have you ever heard of the simulation theory? Well, if one of the two is correct, we might expect to receive messages from dead universes and beyond. How? Let's dive into it. Within cosmology is the idea that our current universe may not be the first one, but rather another in a long series of repeating universes. Physicist Roger Penrose has suggested that it may be possible, and there is some evidence of this, that remnants from the previous universe might be discernible in the cosmic background radiation, that is electromagnetic radiation from the Big Bang. The origin of this radiation depends on the region of the spectrum that is observed. One component is the cosmic microwave background. This component is red-shifted photons that have freely streamed from an epoch when the universe became transparent for the first time to radiation. Its discovery and detailed observations of its properties are considered one of the major confirmations of the Big Bang. Another controversial idea opens up the possibility of someone in that previous universe possibly encoding a message in the afterglow of the Big Bang. While there is no evidence of a message, if such a thing were ever found, it would be amazing and it would represent a message from before the Big Bang in another universe that was reaching its end. This would likely be a sad, creepy message indeed from some civilization preparing to turn the lights out and simply cease existing. In principle, they might tell us who they were and what the end of our own universe is going to be like. Perhaps they receive messages from even earlier universes and then pass those messages along to us. What if this was the only chance for us to send messages to another universe? If this is indeed possible, it would represent something unique and would presumably be a message that could be read by almost any species in the universe and might form a commonality between all civilizations. If the messages from civilization to civilization, from the universe to the universe can be deciphered, they will form the basis of a universal common language. Vanishing Stars Nowadays, we are collecting samples from the Moon and from comets such as the Rosetta mission and the Hayabusa Japanese mission. These missions collected samples in order to have a better knowledge of the materials on the Moon and comets. But let's say in the future we needed raw materials. Could our technology be helpful to extract raw materials from stars, natural satellites, and asteroids? The answer is yes. In fact, say we decided to mine an asteroid for its raw materials. Depending on the composition, they contain many materials that are already of value such as platinum, but also materials in the future that may be of value simply because they are already located in space and do not need to be launched in space, such as iron and nickel. Because of this, it can be envisioned that someday an entire asteroid might simply disappear due to the mining activities of humans. 
No doubt much of this mining will someday be automated, sending robots with advanced AI to do the dirty, dangerous work instead of humans. Did you see the Boston Dynamics video? Would be a good option and it could be made without any effort from us. At this point, many asteroids would disappear and perhaps even the disassembly of entire planets in the solar system might start. We may even begin to mine the sun, so to speak, through stellar lifting. It's at that point that our mining activities might become visible to others. Now imagine an advanced civilization, say a civilization many times more advanced that can visibly change stars or even make them disappear entirely. Looking for stars that change their appearance in unnatural ways is a current hot topic within SETI, since we have a number of periodic sky surveys already finished in which to search for such a thing. Now, detection like this wouldn't be particularly frightening, though what would happen if some advanced civilization started to eat the sun? Better not to think about it. Nickel Dyson Beam Luckily for what we know at the moment, the Milky Way is a peaceful galaxy. There are no ongoing wars. No emperors want to expand themselves. Our detecting systems seem to hint that we are alone. Alone in this small yet huge part of the universe, in the so-called local group. But are we? What if we are not alone? It might be an alien civilization whose only intention is conquering the whole galaxy. They might have learned to produce new weapons, new extraordinary firearms or nuclear ones. Maybe they are out there, but we can't communicate with them, nor see them because they are simply hiding from us. What kind of gun could they have? In order to conquer the galaxy, they must have developed powerful tools and invested heavily in weapons. One of the most feared weapons ever designed is a nickel Dyson beam. Have you ever heard of it? The nickel Dyson beam was a beam that would harness a star's entire energy output and destroy other celestial bodies. It makes use of a megastructure built around this star that collimates the energy of the star in one single point, using it as a powerful gun, the Dyson Sphere. So a Dyson Sphere is a hypothetical megastructure that completely encompasses a star and captures a large percentage of its power output. The power of a collimated beam is limited by the focus of the beam when it reaches a distant target. One way to improve this focus is to increase the effective aperture of the emitter. Dyson Sphere collects considerable amounts of energy from the stars they contain. If some of that energy can be stored, then directed towards a target in a different planetary system, considerable damage can result. In practice, the outermost elements of the swarm or the outer surface of a dynamically supported Dyson shell become a phased array emitter. This allows a powerful beam to be focused on a distant target in another planetary system. This concept was first suggested by James Nickel in the Information Age and is known as a Nickel Dyson Beam for this reason. Nickel Dyson beams are routinely used to propel laser sail craft and interstellar distances in sci-fi movies and books and have been used to send messages to distant locations. Nickel Dyson arrays can also be used as weapons. Severe damage can be inflicted on a planet's surface or on a megastructure at great distances. However, if you think about it, it is not a great weapon. In fact, if a beam is fired, this results in significant destruction in a distant system many years later due to the finite velocity of waves. Suppose civilizations were on a war period between emperors. During the intervening period, wars may have ended, treaties may have been signed, and the political landscape may have changed. Nonetheless, the beam is still on its way and cannot be recalled. We hope we never detect such beams because if we were, we would be done. DNA SETI While a long shot, it is plausible that Earth has been visited by alien civilizations sometime in the distant past, perhaps even millions or even a billion years or more. If it happened long enough ago, there are a few ways where evidence of a visit might have been preserved. But we know Earth loves to erode and renew its surface, leaving little room for any artifacts to be preserved. Where shall we find them? Well, we know it's a different story with some of the areas of the solar system. In fact, we might find some oddly depleted asteroid that might have been subjected to mining at some stage, or we might even find some artifact in space, or even on the moon, where things tend to preserve longer, though not indefinitely. But there is one medium, maybe the most important one, and the creepiest we could detect, where evidence may be preserved almost indefinitely, and that is the information encoded in DNA. It has been suggested that if an alien civilization had visited Earth, 
say when life was simple and exclusively microbial, they might have altered the DNA of early life or even later complex life to reflect a kind of SETI message. This could be a very simple message or a more complex message. It could be just a note that someone had visited here in the past and left telltale patterns or markers encoded in life itself. It would be kind of a postcard. Or maybe the message could be very complex, giving us a kind of Encyclopedia Galactica regarding alien civilizations of long ago, like the one described in the famous book The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Another possibility is encoded messages in microbial life that might have traveled here via panspermia or even life on other solar system bodies, if that proves to exist in places like Mars or Europa. Or the message might be more sinister, raising the question of past manipulation of life on Earth. Lastly but not least, DNA SETI could even contain a warning message of some kind of a threat that each and every one of us would carry in our own bodies placed there long ago by an alien civilization. I know it's very weird. It's best not to think about it. Self-replicating spacecrafts Say an alien civilization, or us, wanted to mine an entire asteroid or moon. It would be a large-scale mining operation. This is not sci-fi because we all know that at some point we'll have to go and search for new materials on other celestial objects rather than the Earth. Resources are finite. Scientist and mathematician von Neumann proved that the most effective way of performing large-scale mining operations such as mining an entire moon or asteroid belt would be by self-replicating spacecraft, taking advantage of their exponential growth. What does it mean in practice? Well, a self-replicating spacecraft could be sent to a neighboring planetary system where it would seek out raw materials, extracted from asteroids, moons, gas giants, etc., to create replicas of itself. These replicas would then be sent out to other planetary systems. The original parent probe could then pursue its primary purpose within the star system. This mission varies widely depending on the variant of self-replicating starship proposed. We know it's a very difficult project to accomplish, and so far, we've never detected signals of a self-replicating spacecraft in the solar system. Lucky, I guess. But there is one ethical problem with that. Given this pattern and its similarity to the reproduction patterns of bacteria, it has been pointed out that von Neumann machines might be considered a form of life. In his short story Lungfish, see Self-Replicating Machines in Fiction, David Brin touches on this idea, pointing out that self-replicating machines launched by different species might actually compete with one another in a Darwinistic fashion for raw material or even have conflicting missions. Given enough variety of species, they might even form a type of ecology, or should they also have a form of artificial intelligence, a society. They may even mutate with untold thousands of generations. It has also been theorized that a self-replicating starship utilizing relatively conventional theoretical methods of interstellar travel, i.e. no exotic faster-than-light propulsion and speeds limited to an average cruising speed of 10% of the speed of light could spread throughout a galaxy the size of the Milky Way in as little as half a million years. Do you think it will be possible for us to build such a self-replicating spacecraft? At the moment, there are a lot of speculations on that, and also many papers were published in order to give a boost to this field of research. We just have to wait and see what the future will be like, and we hope that if we ever detect signals of such self-replicating spacecraft, it will be from a peaceful alien civilization. The Closing In Signal We are used to imagining that if we ever detect an alien signal, it would be from a thousand light years away. In fact, there are very small chances to detect signals from very near celestial objects. Or is it so? What if one day we woke up with this news? Alien signal detected from radio telescope and we found the signal was sent from a very close star or from a very close celestial object. Plus, what if we found that the signal was blue shifted? It would mean that the signal emitter, i.e. the alien probe, is coming towards us. It would be very creepy. Can you think about it? What would your first reaction be? I'd probably go crazy running the stairs of my condominium up and down all day. There would be very little we could do about that. At least in the short term, we would simply just have to wait until it arrived to find out what its real intentions were, whether friendly or otherwise. We would pass our days trying to imagine what the alien would be. 
Of course, no such signal has been found today, but there is a candidate. Have you ever heard about the WOW signal? One little known aspect of the famous 1977 WOW signal that may have been a veil in origin is that it's not actually known how distant it really was. Actually, it could be a signal coming from a very distant object, but studies actually suggest that it could have been emitted from a nearer source. All that is known is that it had to be at least half the distance to the moon. Beyond that, it could have been light years away, but one hallmark of the WOW signal was that it was very strong. Indeed, the strongest signal of its type picked up by the Big Ear Telescope and its entire decade-long run was SETI. That could suggest that either the signal was being transmitted with enormous power from a distance or that it was close. And this brings up another little-known aspect of the signal. It was actually just above the 1420 megahertz hydrogen line. Now, this is a commonly used frequency in satellite and probe communication, suggesting either that it was intentionally broadcast that way or that it had a very slight blue shift, suggesting that whatever it was was coming towards us very slowly, about 10 kilometers per second according to estimates. That's slower than many of our own space probes are moving. It means that probably it could not be one of our own launched probes. But until that signal repeats, which it may never do, we will never know what it was or how far away it originated. 